the Richmond documentary is about sharing our stories um, based on where we live and um, putting it all together to share it with other people as an experience that we've been going through living in a low-income community with with a big company next to us that is damaging. Somewhat interesting the amount of things that we're kind of put through in this community of color. It just And sometimes it makes me wonder, is it because we're a community of color? Is it because we're low income? Because you wouldn't really see this in a white neighborhood. Richmond has a long-standing history with Chevron. It goes back to a time before the integration of Richmond. With the refinery opening in 1902 and the city being integrated in 1905, Chevron has had a big impact on the economy because it is the city's biggest employer. The automobile industry has such a long-standing history here in the city of Richmond that we, for a very long time, there's been a Ford automobile manufacturing plant and that, that in itself was integral to fighting the, the um, during World War II, for example, like in 1942, they went from shipping like just regular uh, automobiles for travel, but then they went to um, shipping jeeps and tanks and you know other things to help with the war effort. Um, so we understand that it's a very, very, it's very integral to the city itself, um, and that that you know centrality surrounding kind of tour around the automobile industry might explain today why we have a lot of you know automobile shops, um, like small checks at every other, every other corner on 23rd Street, right? So that might explain it and um you know the emissions from like all of the automobiles and carbon dioxide for example might be directly related to the the high asthma rates that we are seeing today in in our area in 2012 the refinery caught fire and exploded this is a noxious gas into the air which sent people to the hospital it put people in, with asthma in danger, which hits close to home because two of my closest friends are asthma. So I personally have asthma myself, but so do some of my family members. Um, I remember a time where my aunt, um, she was like cl close enough to like the, the barbecue grill. And I guess um, the smoke from it kind of triggered her. And she started coughing intensely and started a panic where everyone was looking for, an, for her inhaler, the emergency one. So they, they started to call 911 and once like, the ambulance came and took her to the ER. And when she got home from that, like a couple of days later, um, she received the hospital bill and the ambulance bill. But at that time, she didn't have um, health care. Like now till this day, she's, she's still kind of paying off the bills. So when I was in elementary school, I would get in trouble a lot. And I was in the office, you know, and I was getting scolded by a staff member. And they just went silent out of nowhere. And I realized that they were having an asthma attack. And that was probably one of the scariest things ever. They tried their best to get their inhaler, but I mean, luckily she was able to get her inhaler and, you know, calm, calm down. But, you know, growing up, I, I realized that this is, kind of norm. A lot of people in the area have experienced this kind of thing and, and it's kind of sad because a lot of people in other places don't experience it as much. And it just makes me it just makes me think like what can we do to change it because these are people's lives we're talking about. Growing in and in Richmond and traveling down the main streets, you get this kind of sense that something is missing, but you can't exactly really place it at that moment. You sort of somewhat notice that upon visiting other cities or viewing them online, and you sort of notice all this lush greenery on your streets and the bushes and the flowers, and then you see the lack of enrichment. In a way, I find this to be somewhat ironic to the fact that trees bring about many benefits, such as reducing air and noise pollution, as well as controlling temperature. And it leaves me somewhat confused because, well, wouldn't you want more trees in an area like Richmond where there's a high number of car pollution and a major oil refinery near us? And going off of this too, we're introduced to an energy company called Kinder Morgan, a large gas and oil company that ships their tanks of oil and gas in and out of Richmond. 
right now they currently own 10 acres of land in Richmond since probably 2001. You kind of grow up with the black circular tanks of oil shipping through Richmond and you don't really question it. I know at least that I and the people around me that I didn't and we gained a sense of normality. And I was doing a um, community mural with uh, people from Richmond. I was there to help pitch ideas of things that we can put into the mural. And it was going to be about asthma. And when I pitched the idea of trying to put in Chevron as one of the things that kind of causes uh, people's asthma and health to act up, uh, they denied it because they didn't want um, Chevron to be depicted in the mural since Chevron is a Richmond sponsor and this was going to be a Richmond mural. Like joining Earth Team has really opened my eyes to this kind of stuff, and as well as how dangerous it is to be that close to oil tanks, such due to the fact that Kendall Morgan is, is as of now shipping a type of crude oil that is more volatile and more prone to exploding if it were to derail. We're suspecting that the strong presence of the automobile industry and its subsequent pollution are all contributing to the high rates of asthma in Richmond. We, as Earth Team, have come up with what we call the Carbon Rays, an educational exhibit meant to promote more sustainable forms of transportation in the neighborhood. We wanted to find a creative way to draw people in so they can see how much carbon we emit into the atmosphere. We came up with the idea to make a little model of an arcade game that shows the audience several figures and the different amount of carbon that they contribute to the atmosphere. Through this, we hope to convince more people to start carpooling, if not start using tra public transportation more, or try to bike their commute. Coming from a low-income community, sometimes can, people can feel inferior. I know I did for a certain amount of time in my life. But when I joined Earth Team uh, and later on in the year, we got close to each other and we knew each other well and we started working on the carbon race. I felt like I was actually doing something that was going to be heard in front of so many people. And I hope that many other people from here can feel motivated through us, through Earth Team, through the carbon race to do to be more involved in stuff like this and to break all stereotypes that people from low income communities can't do. Different initiatives that we see taking place in the city of Richmond is marine clean energy. It gives the citizens a trade off between fossil fuel and solar energy. This means there are more green jobs available to the citizens of Richmond and more funding for these projects around the Bay Area to stop climate change. We look forward to having more jobs like these in the near future from the city of Richmond. Thank you for watching and envisioning a more equitable Richmond with us. Of the, uh, audio oh, I'm so sorry, okay. Because I'm using this audio and I'm recording on my phone, so I, you, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, Jessica. No? Yeah, now I can. Um. Can I start over again?